Battlers, I'm currently giving away three Colossal Discovery Passes for free. All you need to do to enter is subscribe to the channel. The three winners will be announced on October 31st at around 6 p.m. Eastern Time on Twitter. All right, Battlers, welcome back to a brand new Sinister Cup video. This is a recap of Matt Suar's Monster Ball Sinister Cup footage. This was a stacked lobby with big names like The Mummy Dust, Holden McGroin, Dragon Silk, Gary Oak, and more. This battle footage is amazing, and Matt Suar is known as the off-meta Spice Master, and you're going to find out exactly why. He brings in some wild picks, the most outrageous one being Combuskin. He makes it work, though, as he battles his way to a 3-1 and one finish. Matt Suar is going to start off round one against Florida's very own Clash and Cliff. Clash and Cliff is bringing Driftblim, Polyrath, Steelix, Medicham, Gardevoir, and Dusclops. Jumping into game one against Clash and Cliff, Matt is going to lead with Lugia. He does have his Bastiat on and his Lime Green Polyrath in the back. This is a great lead situation for Matt as Clash and Cliff decided to lead Polyrath. He is going to swap out into that Steelix and in comes the Lime Green Polyrath. Matt Suar is running Dynamic Punch and Ice Punch, so if that Dynamic Punch lands, it's going to devastate the Steelix. He does shield the Earthquake and here comes the big Dynamic Punch. It does a huge amount of damage. That Steelix is out for the count. Clash and Cliff is going to think things over and then bring in Dusclops. This is an excellent situation for Matt Suar as he's just going to put as much pressure on the Clops as he can. He's going to go straight for these Ice Punches and he's already fired off two. Dusclops has to either uh, shield or just accept this damage. And here comes a switch from Clash and Cliff into his own Polyrath. He used Dusclops essentially to absorb all that extra energy and try to battle his way back. He does bring down that Polyrath with a dynamic punch of his own but in comes Lugia. Lugia is going to only need one Sky Attack to bring down this Polyrath. Clash and Cliff is fighting till the very end though. He does fire off the Hydro Pump which is shielded. In comes a Sky Attack from Lugia and it is shielded. He's got to burn through this shield and then one more Sky Attack will take down the Polyrath. However, Clash and Cliff does allow it through and brings in the Dusclops. This is basically GG's at this point. Uh, even the Shadow Punches are not going to do very much against the Lugia here. He is going to have to allow that Shadow Punch through. He over farms a little bit and then goes for the Sky Attack. It does go shielded, so the uh, Dust Clops is still in the game here. He is able to Shadow Punch down the Lugia, and then in comes the Bastiodon. So Clash and Cliff has to know at this point that this match is done. In round one, Matt Suar wrecks Clash and Cliff. Hashtag get wrecked. Going right into round two, look at this. We have Combuskin coming out. This is what you've been waiting for. That Steelix is going to run scared, swapping out into the Gardevoir. Matt is going to bring in his Bastiodon to deal with this Gardevoir. This is a pretty uh, one-sided, lopsided match as that Bastiodon can take whatever this Gardevoir dishes out. Shadow Ball is no issue, and those charms are barely inching down the health. Matt Suar has a ton of energy, including the Flamethrower. In comes the Steelix, and he's going to put the Flamethrower pressure on the Steelix here. Steelix is feeling the heat. It does shield that first one, but here comes a second one, and it is getting too hot to handle in here. He does land that second flamethrower, so Steelix is about a little over half health. Bastiodon is going to absorb this crunch here and still survive. He gets to a third flamethrower, guys, and this really is just insane. He is going to use this against the Steelix and almost bring it down. Steelix is going to expend its energy here with the crunch, but Matt has his trusty Combuskin in the back, and I love the flip animation, guys. If you love the, these little flips, please hit the like button. Matt Spar is the Spice King, and this is always entertaining footage. He fires off the Rock Slide against the Dust Clops. <laughs> uh, sorry, and he does uh, decide to shield this Shadow Punch here. Keeping Combuskin in the game, he does go for another Rock Slide here against the Dust Clops, and it does get shielded. He's got one more shield in the bank, and he's going to burn it on his little Combuskin. This guy's like a little chicken nugget, and he fires off, uh, oh, he almost gets to another rock slide, but that Dusclops is gonna fire off the Shadow Punch, and Combuskin's time in the limelight is over. In comes Lugia, and he's able to farm down the Dusclops for the win. In game three, Matt is going back to his original line. He is going to bring in that Lugia first, and he is going to run into Polyrath again. So this is a great situation. In comes that Clops. He attempts to go for the switch there, but it doesn't quite go through. And look at this, switch locked against the Bastiodon. This Dust Clops is pinned to the wall. He is gonna fire off the Shadow Punch, but as you can tell, it barely does anything at all. This is a farmable matchup for uh, Bastiodon in most cases. He does have to look out for the Fire Punch. And it's curious to me that Clash and Cliff is not using Fire Punch 
as it would be more effective. Uh, perhaps he doesn't have that as a second move, and that might be an interesting tell. Matt is actually going to undercharge that move, trying to get a little more energy together by farming down. There come the fire punches. He's going to farm down this Dust Clops here. He has a flamethrower and a stone edge loaded. In comes the Polyrath, and he's going to go for the stone edge here just to get some chip damage in on it. He does look to swap into Lugia, or excuse me, into Polyrath. So we have a green Polyrath versus a blue Polyrath here. He is going to allow this move through, which is Dynamic Punch. He, his opponent still has two shields, so this isn't an excellent situation for him. He is going to fire off the Dynamic Punch and draw that first shield. Attempting to get to another dyna Dynamic Punch, he will shield this Dynamic Punch from Clash and Cliff. He does fire off his own again. He's either going to get that second shield or the Polyrath, and he gets the second shield. That means Lugia is free to roam. When it comes in, it's going to be able to fire off those Sky Attacks. Matt is actually going to shield this Dynamic Punch here and bring down the Polyrath. That was a Mudshot Polyrath as well, so a very precarious situation when it's Polyrath versus Polyrath. In comes the Steelix with full health. He's able to get to that Dynamic Punch here, so this will put a tremendous amount of pressure on the Steelix. That Steelix is very weak. He does still have his Bastide on, but he decides to bring in his Lugia. Even a Crunch here would not end the game for Matt. This is a pretty clear win. He's going to absorb that Crunch no problem, and Clash and Cliff is going to maybe lag or allow this one through. Matt takes round one in a three-game sweep. Matt Swar's second round opponent is Fun Jim. Fun Jim is bringing Steelix, Polyrath, Metacham, Dusclops, Driftlim, and Mawile. For game one against Fun Jim, Matt is going to lead his little Combuskin. This is so much fun to watch. He is firing off these Embers against the Driftlim, and the swap occurs in the Polyrath. He does switch into his Lugia, though, so this is a favorable situation for Matt. He can absorb these Ice Punches no problem with Lugia. Probably take three or four of them. He's going to go here for a little bit of an overcharge and then decide to shield his Lugia against the second Ice Punch. Again, overcharging a little bit and then going for the Sky Attack. He does have a lot of energy banked. I think he needs probably two more extra sensories. There he is. He uh, is built up to it again. He is going to absorb this attack from Polyrath and just barely get off the Sky Attack. This is a result of tons of practice, as you can tell. He knows this matchup inside and out. The shields are down. In comes a little Combuskin. He's going to fire off the Rock Slide here. This will be enough to bring down the Polyrath. So he still has one shield. He's going to face off against Dusclops and then swap beautifully into his Bastiodon to absorb the Shadow Punch. Dusclops is cornered and the fighter on the opposing side is out of the way, so these Bastiodon smackdowns are going to add up very quickly, and I'm not sure that Fun Jam has anything to answer for the Bastiodon here. He's going to go for the Stone Edge against the Dusclops, bringing it extremely low. One more attack will fly his way though, it is a Fire Punch, not a big deal to Bastiodon. Bastiodon eats those for lunch, hashtag Purple Kyogre. In comes Driftblim and he's going to have to absorb this attack. It is the Ominous Wind, Driftblim does not get the boost. Here comes a Stone Edge guys, and I think this is going to win the game for Matt. And it does. Taking a look at game two against Fun Jim, Matt's going to lead with Lugia into Steelix. This isn't a great situation for him. Lugia is very bulky, but it takes a long time to get to the uh, Hydro Pump. He's going to bring in that fun Combuskin yet again. Here comes a Crunch from Steelix, and those Embers are starting to add up. Here comes the Switch into Polyrath, and I'm curious to see how he handles this. He actually goes for the Flamethrower here and uh, is going to continue to build up energy. I believe Flamethrower must be the right move here. Matt has practiced a ton with this Combuskin and he knows his stuff. He goes for another Flamethrower after absorbing the Power Up Punch and that Polyrath will shield. Looks like a little bit of lag on Fun Gem's side, but not a big deal. In comes the Lugia versus Polyrath. He's not gonna shield this attack and it is an Ice Punch. I think this Polyrath has enough energy for two and it does. He is going to decide to shield the second Ice Punch. Kind of bummed out, he couldn't get the KO with the extra sensory, but he does. After the fact, in comes that Steelix. There's one shield and he thinks he can go straight for it. He's not gonna wait for the bait and it lands perfectly. In comes the Drift Limb, which is Matt's final opponent on Fun Jim's team. He fires off the Sky Attack and it does get shielded, but look at this, Bastiodon comes in and this is bad news bears for the Blim. Blim's gonna fire off a Shadow Ball here, but this is basically GG's. Matt does get to the Stone Edge, but he's gonna have to absorb one more Ominous Wind before he fires it off. Here comes the Stone Edge from Matt, and this will take down the Drift Blim to win. 
For game three against Fun Jim, Matt is going to lead with that Lugia. He is facing off against Mawile. Mawile's bites are no joke. He's gonna have to bring that Lugia out and go in with Combuskin. In comes that Polyrath, just like before. And this time, Polyrath's going to get to its move first. He does go for the power-up punch here. And Combuskin's only probably gonna be able to get off one flamethrower against the Polyrath. He does fire that off and bring that Polyrath to less than half health but he does get bubbled down. Polyrath has a ton of energy. This has to be concerning for Matt. He's going to bring in his Lugia and those extra sensories are chipping down. In comes an attack from the Polyrath, which is power up punch, so it was a bait. These extra sensories might do the trick for him, so I think he's going to farm this one down. He does shield that ice punch and do the farm move. Now he's got a ton of energy. In comes that Mawile yet again, but now it has a power up punch. So. He's not gonna burn another shield on Lugia, recognizing that spending its energy and then bringing in Bastiodon is his best chance now that the fighter is out of the way. He's gonna fire off the sky attack here, which does draw the second shield, and look at this, guys. He gets to a hydro pump. If this lands, it will devastate them all a while, and it doesn't, it gets shielded, but that's perfectly fine. He's got Bastiodon with one shield, and this is going to be a very interesting finish because those bites are already boosted. In comes Drift Limb, and this is basically GG's at this point. Matt is going to allow this attack through, opting to not even use his shield. He is going to go for the Stone Edge here, and like we've seen in games one and two, he is going to take it down. He does undercharge so he can farm up this uh, Drift Limb. He knows that when the Mawile comes in, the Flamethrower will win it for him. He's going to decide to shield this final Power Up Punch from Mawile, but this is GG's. Matt takes round two in a three game sweep. Jumping into game three against Gary Oak 620 you've probably seen him on King's channel. He is bringing Haunter, Slowbro, Bastiodon, Metacham, Dusclops, and Steelix. To kick off round one, Matt is going to lead with his Lugia into that Bastiodon. This is no good for him. He does get a little bit of energy together and then look for the swap. He does bring in his Polyrath here and he's going to face off against Slowbro. This is a Water Gun Slowbro and those Water Guns are doing a surprising amount of damage for Polyrath uh, resisting it. He's going to keep on going for his moves here, but, but not before Slowbro gets one of his own. It is a Psychic, and that would have KO'd if it would have landed. Matt is going to go here for the Dynamic Punch, trying to get this Slowbro out of the way, but it does get shielded, so he goes for another Dynamic Punch here. He gets the Excellent on that one, and it lands. One more Bubble will bring down the Slowbro, which is a great situation for Matt to be in. He has removed the fighting type counter on the team. In comes the uh, Dusclops and Matt's switch timer is up, so he brings in Lugia, and then here comes the Bastiodon. Guys, he's not going for the bait. He's playing very aggressively. The Hydro Pump lands, doing super effective damage, and that Bastiodon has to be feeling the heat. Here we go with the Bastiodon Stone Edge. He's gonna bring down the Lugia, and Matt is fine with that. He's gonna line up his Polyrath with the Bastiodon yet again. A little switch tray uh, shenanigans going on there, but it's okay. He does shield the Stone Edge, and then go here for the Dynamic Punch. If this is, goes through, it will beat Bastiodon, and it does. In comes the uh, Dusclops, and he's gonna go straight for the Ice Punch. He's trying to build up to another Ice Punch here, and he doesn't quite make it. So he does decide to bring in his Bastiodon here, and at this point, Gary Oak has to know that this is GG's. Bastiodon in the end game, even with no shields, is just so devastating in this cup. You have to remove the fighter from their squad and then Bastiodon can essentially roam free. Dusclops is gonna fire off another fire punch, but this is pretty much it. The Smackdowns will win it for Matt. For game two, Matt's gonna lead with Bastiodon. He does have his uh, Lugia and Polyrath in the back. As you can tell, this is one of his favorite lines. He uses this a lot in the video. He is gonna mirror this Bastiodon here, so essentially they're playing chicken. You got two big trains coming at each other, and whoever swaps out first is going to be uh, the one to reveal their hand and then get answered by their opponent. So he does go for the flamethrower just like his opponent Bastiodon did. He's gonna continue to farm up some energy and neither of these players are blinking. He does get to the flamethrower before Gary Oak this time. And Gary Oak decides to shield. So he did get he did earn the first shield from Gary Oak. He's gonna shield in return, going blow for blow with the Bastiodon. This is a essentially a pretty boring match, but in comes that uh, Metacham. Gary Oak blinks first and in comes the Lugia. So Lugia will take this ice punch 
and then it's going to build up to the sky attack. He knows that he can get to two sky attacks here. Even if the first one is shielded, that means there are no more shields to protect the Bastion in the back. So the Hydro Pump would be super effective. Metacham's gonna go for another move and very gutsy move by Matt to not shield. He, I think he's trying to whittle down his Lugia so there's not much energy for Bastion on farm. The shield is out of the way and he's pushing for that Hydro Pump, but Lugia gets taken down. Matt does decide to bring in his Polyrath here and the swap occurs. In comes Dusclops and check this out. He's gonna lock this Dusclops against the Bastiodon, which is great for him. The uh, Bastiodon is essentially pretty weak, so it'll be interesting to see. Yes, he decides to shield. He's gonna shield the Shadow Punch, opting to try to get to one more Stone Edge, but it doesn't work out. I think he'll survive this Fire Punch. And he does, but he's not able to get to the move. In comes that Polyrath and the Dusclops is so weakened, I think the Ice Punch will do it for him, and it does. In comes that Bastiodon with charge energy, but this is not a big deal. All he needs to do is throw that Dynamic Punch, and here it comes. Matt is gonna win game two against Gary Oak. Going into game three against Gary Oak, Matt is gonna switch up the flow, Hero Vange style, with that Polyrath in front, Lugia and Bastiodon behind it. He's gonna lead Polyrath into Dusclops. So this, as we've studied this matchup a lot in the Sinister Cup, this is a very, um, in a lot of ways, a very even matchup. It can go either way, depending on shielding. He's gonna swap into his Bastiodon. This isn't uh, an ideal situation, but Luckily, there's no fighter on the other side, so the Steel Steelix comes in to answer. He's gonna fire off the flamethrower here, and it goes unshielded, so Steelix, I think, is gonna go straight for the Earthquake here, and he does. Bastidon is able to survive that. Such a tank, such a wall. He's gonna fire off another flamethrower. If this one goes through, the Steelix will fall, or excuse me, he will be really close. Steelix is gonna go for another move here, which is Crunch. Bastidon survives that as well, man. Bastidon is so OP. He almost works down that Steelix, but he uh, is brought down at the last moment. One extra sensory from Lugia will bring down the Steelix, and it's two pokes versus two pokes with two shields. In comes Dusclops with energy from earlier. Matt decides not to shield the Shadow Punch. He's going to uh, farm up some energy here. Another Shadow Punch comes flying, and Matt will shield this one. He's trying to uh, gather some energy and then looks to make the swap into Polyrath and goes straight for the Ice Punch. Polyrath is gonna face off here against Haunter, and if he doesn't get the shield, he's taking the Haunter with the Ice Punch. Oh, he does bring it very low, excuse me. Haunter's able to get to another move. It is Shadow Punch. He's gonna go for here for another bubble, and he's got some energy loaded. He goes for the Ice Punch here against Dusclops. This is gonna be a very close match, guys. Uh, there is still one shield in play, but Polyrath is able to pressure it out of him. Look at this, Polyrath is excellent in this cup, an excellent fighter, an excellent generalist against the Ghost with the Ice Punch. It is going to take this Shadow Punch, and then in comes Lugia to wrap things up. Start the drum roll, trainers. This is the championship round, the final round. It is Dragon Silk Gaming versus Matt Suar. Dragon Silk is bringing Polyrath, Alola Marowak, Steelix, Driftlim, the surprise pick Girafferig, and Metacham. Matt Suar is going to lead that Lugia into Driftlim. Both trainers are going to encounter a moment of lag, but it's no big deal. They're gonna play through it, and Driftlim gets its move first. Matt opts not to shield here with his Lugia. He's gonna allow the ominous win through, and then bail out into his Bastiodon. Bastiodon gets a few smackdowns before the Polyrath arrives. He's gonna fire off the Stone Edge here, just trying to get some chip damage on the fighting type Polyrath. But this is not a good situation for his Bastiodon. Polyrath is firing off all these bubbles and has all this energy loaded. It might be a bait here, and it is the Dynamic Punch. This Polyrath is going to have to take another Stone Edge or burn his shield though, because Matt fires it off. Polyrath is very weak now, and Matt's actually going to shield. He's investing in the Bastiodon here. He knows, again, that if you get rid of the fighting type Pokemon, the Bastiodon has a good chance against whatever's in the back. Driftlim does come in here. Even the Shadow Ball would not bring it down, and it is a Shadow Ball. He's gonna do as much work to the Driftlim as he can. He goes for a Stone Edge pressure here. He's either gonna earn the shield or the Driftlim, and he gets the Blim. In comes Girafferig as the final Pokemon. So Matt is gonna come in with Lugia. This is still anybody's game because this Drafrig has two shields. However, Lugia is putting on the pressure. All that energy from earlier is paying off. Double sky attack and now Drafrig is shieldless. He does fire up the Thunderbolt to beat the Lugia. In comes the Polyrath guys and one more Thunderbolt will end it. He is gonna go here for the Ice Punch against Drafrig. 
and he does bring it extremely low, but look at this, Drifer gets one more Thunderbolt, or excuse me, Psychic, and Dragon Silk wins round one. For round two against Dragon Silk, Matt is going to lead with that Polyrath. Let's see what happens. He leads right into that Giraffe Rig. Terrible situation for him. He's gonna fire off three, four bubbles, five bubbles, six bubbles, attempts to switch and goes right here for the Lugia. He's gonna get hit by the Psychic, not very effective. Uh, his Polyrath has a ton of energy, but not much health. In comes that Drift Limb from earlier. We're gonna see the Sky Attack here against it. It does get shielded. Matt still has two shields. He's gonna burn one here on his Lugia, wary of the ominous wind. Luckily, uh, Dragon Silk did not get the boost. He does go here for the sky attack against the Drift Limb and bring it into the red. Drift Limb has enough energy for another move though, and Matt is going to double shield his Lugia. This is the pivot point of the match for him. He bails into Bastiodon. Excellent, excellent switch. He's gonna absorb this ominous wind and be able to smack down that Blim with just one attack. In comes Polyrath though, and that switch uh, might have been to the detriment in the long term. He does fire off the Stone Edge here, doing great damage to Polyrath. Uh, but Polyrath is building tons of energy and the shields are down, so he has, be no he has to be well aware that the dynamic punch is coming, and there it is. In comes that Lugia, and it's very weak. Polyrath is going to fire off the Ice Punch to bring it down, and it is Polyrath versus Giraffe Rig yet again. He is going to go here for the dynamic punch. Maybe Ice Punch would have been a little more energy efficient, but one more confusion will win Dragon Silk round two. For round three against Dragon Silk, Matt will lead with that Lugia. He leads right into the Steelix. Uh, Steelix is going to stay in here for a moment. He, uh, Matt does get some energy together, and then Steelix fires off the Crunch. Matt fires off one more extra sensory, then bails out in Polyrath. In comes that pesky Giraffe Rig to answer, though. Guys, I tried to run Giraffe Rig in my own team, but I kept on running into Steelix. It is really a beautiful thing how Dragon Silk is able to manage his Giraffe Rig matchups and not line them up with Steelix. Uh, I'm sure he would probably have something to say about team composition and when he decided to bring Giraffe Rig in matches, but one of those Pokemon that is so useful but has an, an opponent in the core lineup of most teams that just crushes it. It can be very difficult to use, but Dragon Silk has masterful usage of Giraffe Rig in this video. Hit like for Giraffe Rig and for Dragon Silk. Steelix is going to go for the Crunch here and bring down Polyrath. Uh, in comes Matt, and he's going to fire off the Hydro Pump here against Polyrath, which obviously was not the right move. He needed to go for the Sky Attack there, but the switches were just so good. He got caught in the moment. A nice punch will fly his way. He's going to over farm a little bit and then go right for the sky attack. He does catch those bubbles he almost missed, getting the excellent. In comes the final Pokemon, which is Steelix, and out comes Bastiodon. All Bastiodon needs to do to win is get to one flamethrower here. He will survive this earthquake, no big deal. And then one more smackdown will net him the flamethrower. Matt Suar is going to win game three against Dragon Silk, and he will finish three and one. Battlers, I just want to make a quick shout out to Matt Suar for sending me this footage. This was so much fun to shoutcast. He is the spicy pick master, as you saw with the Combuskin there. He wins a lot of games with off-meta picks, so if you're looking for a trainer that does this kind of wild stuff and is still exceptionally good, you need to follow Matt Suar. I will leave his Twitter handle down in the description below, so please give him a follow. Battlers, if you enjoyed this content, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I can't wait to make a new video for you tomorrow. Battlers, I'm currently giving away three Colossal Discovery Passes for free. All you need to do to enter is subscribe to the channel. The three winners will be announced on October 31st at around 6 p.m. Eastern Time on Twitter.